Uh, hi everybody, this is Peter. Um, today I'm going to I'm doing a video of uh, some sample gameplay of uh, Rinkside Hockey, board game from uh, published by FTP Sports Games. Came out in um, 2013 or 14, I think. And uh, uh, this I just wanted to give you a sort of a, an idea of the the footprint of this game. It's it's um, fairly large, but um, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, you have to excuse me, I'm battling a cold, so my voice is a little rough today, but uh, anyway, we'll uh, just keep going here. Um, now, this game is uh, is uh, available, um, it's a print and play game, so, <coughs> excuse me, um, when you buy the game, he's, um, Jeremy sends you the uh, PDFs and the Excel files to uh, print out. Now uh, the the uh, the charts and the rules and stuff are all in PDF, and uh, the uh, the the um, teams themselves are, are uh, in Excel files. And the reason he does that, uh, I'll just show you a little card here, um, is that. Uh, um, the card comes with, um, it doesn't have the, uh, the, the, this is Eddie Shack from the 6162 Toronto Maple Leafs. I put the Toronto Maple Leaf logo here. That's not, that doesn't come with the card. So, the, uh, with the Excel files, he, uh, you can customize the cards as much as you want before you print them. So, uh, I put in the, the team logo on each card and, uh, there's a, there's a, um, a thread on the, the uh, FTP Sports uh, forum on Delphi. Uh, called XL card ideas, where people have uh, experimented with uh, diff putting on different team colors. Like they might have the team, might have the player's name in, in one of the team colors, or they'll put a border around the, the card and stuff like that. So that's that's kind of neat that you can customize the card uh, however you want, and that goes for all of the FTP games too. He's got football, baseball, and basketball, and he's working on a uh, soccer game. So that's kind of neat. Um, I'm gonna, I'll go back to the card here. I just want to show you. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of information on uh, on the cards. Um, if you count it up, there's they're rated for about 30 different things, which is uh, quite awesome. This is this is a very detailed game, and uh, actually even more detailed than Four Street Hockey. Uh, but and uh, it takes uh, a long takes a long time to play. Um, I've only played this about six or seven times, and um, uh, and it takes me, still takes me a couple of hours to play a complete game, but uh, as I said, it's, it's a large learning curve, but uh, if you like a detailed hockey game, you're going to like this game. Uh, it's worth the effort, uh, absolutely, to um, learn uh, this game. Um, yeah, I just wanted to show you, um, the game comes with uh, uh, a sheet showing um, sort of a breakdown of the player cards and what each of the ratings means that's the, the player cards and there's a sheet showing the uh, explaining what all the ratings mean on the goalie cards so that's quite handy I don't have to refer to them anymore since I, um, since I know where everything is uh, yeah so um, sorry there's a couple other things I wanted to mention here um, yeah for printing out there's um, the cards the player cards there's 15 cards per page and uh, so uh, you're going to be printing out two to three pages per team. Uh, just so you know. Um, this game has got a lot of different uh, neat little features, so, so we'll see that as we go. Um, it's got a few things that you roll for before the game starts. And uh, there's all sorts of uh, little things that um, uh, come out uh, during the play. So I guess we'll just uh, get going here. Um, what I'm focusing here in, in the and the cameras uh, are called the uh, play result cards. Uh, there's no dice in this game at all. These are just uh, play result cards, which I guess is sort of like a, a fast action card type thing. Um, I play with the cards um, as with the other FTP games. Um, it comes with uh, something called a computer game center, which is a, a very elaborate um, Excel based um, helper. And uh, um, Jeremy has posted uh, videos of how that works on, on the FTP Sports uh, website. 
So if you want to check those out and see how that works, uh, go ahead. But I'm going to be playing manually, I guess you would call it. Um, yeah, so anyway. Um, yeah, so these are the play result cards. Uh, there's two. There's a left, left side and a right side here. And um, a lot of the time you're going to be looking at the numbers on the top. I'll just show this, go a little closer here. Um, you have a, a red number uh, in the top corner, uh, uh, which is a, a 1 to 10 number. A blue number, which is a 1 to 20. Uh, this thing is, is a one a number from 1 to 100, and in the rules it's um, it's called the italicized one, 100 number. Um, and the black number in the top right is combined with the... Uh, the black number in the uh, top left of the, the right hand card to get a, a two digit number from 1 to 100. So this is 67. And you see on the right hand side there's a blue number from 1 to 20 and a red number from 1 to 10. And uh, the gameplay is broken down in uh, different zones. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll get into that as we, as we play. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I'll just get going here. So, <clears throat> first thing you do is um, you have something called the pregame skate, and this is where you're going to uh, uh, see uh, how how the goalie uh, does in the warm-up. So, um, so what we do, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to draw draw a couple of new cards here. And, uh, and we're going to look at the, uh, we're going to look at, start with the visiting goalie first, who's uh, Johnny Bauer for Toronto. And we're going to look at the, uh, this 100 number here. And, uh, <clears throat> and if it's, uh, uh, between a one, um, if it's between one and 20, then there's going to be a bad game check. And, uh. Since the number is 30, uh, he doesn't start off the game with a bad game. If if the number was from 1 to 20, then you would look at the uh, the left hand side um, 100 number, and uh, and then you would uh, you would look at that number and compare that with the goalie rating on the card. So, uh, for instance, uh, the goalie ra Johnny Bauer's goalie rating is uh, 43, and if the uh, this the left hand side 100 number was uh, uh, greater than uh, Bauer's goalie rating, then he would start off the game with a bad game. Um, and so uh, that didn't happen. I'll, ex I'll explain uh, what, what the consequences of that are in a sec. So uh, Bauer is just going to start off with uh, um, what's called... Uh... Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, before we do that, so uh, the... the um, since the the right hand number is uh, uh, above twenty, uh, we're going to actually go see if there's a if he's going to be starting off with a good game. So uh, the left hand number is uh, so we check the left hand number seventy nine against Bauer's uh, rating, which was a forty three. Now if that if that uh, one hundred number uh, from the result card was uh, less than Bauer's rating, then he would start off with a good game. So he uh, he doesn't start off with a bad game or a good game. He just starts off with a normal game. <clears throat> okay, so let's check um, Glenn Hall in Chicago. Uh, the right-hand side number is a 58, so it, it, it's not a bad game check, so we're going to do a good game check. The left-hand number is 42, and Hall's um, rating is a 41. Uh, so uh, he just uh, misses uh, starting off the game with a, a good game rating. Now, uh, where that's going to come into effect is um, uh, this. This would come into play is um, there's three big save ratings up here. Uh, when a possible goal is scored, um, you flip a card and see if uh, maybe the goalie makes a big save. So if he's having a a good game, um, and the, the 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 number on the card drawn is uh, one to nine, then he would make a big save on the shot. Um, <clears throat> If they make a great save, there's also a great save rating, uh, then um, the uh, goalie is bumped up from a, uh, a normal game to a good game. If he's already having a good game and he has a, makes a great save, he gets bumped up to a very good game. 
And then if he if he makes another great save, he's get bumped up to a very good game. So uh, that comes into play uh, only when there's a possible goal. Okay. Um, all right. So both goalies are just going to start off with a normal game. So. Um, the next thing you do is you're going to be checking on what the officiating level is going to be like. This is another little neat feature of this game. Um, and so what we're looking at, we're going to be looking at the uh, the 100 number, the combined number here. And it's uh, 13 in this case. <clears throat> so uh, that, means, um, that, the, that means the officials are going to call it tight. And there's a call it tight thing here, so I'm just going to put that... Uh, down here in front of the cards just to remind me that it's call it tight. So what that means is that um, you see these little uh, boxes on the top of the cards, top of the player result cards here. Um, <clears throat> whenever there's, um, you're going to be checking for penalties often, so uh, the, there's a two-stage, two-step uh, process. What you're going to be doing is checking the, uh, um, checking the, uh, this, this um, right-hand 100 number, or it doesn't matter. This is the one I. This is the way I do it. Um, the uh, you're going to be checking the one this 100 number if there's a possible penalty, and comparing that with uh, a player's um, uh, penalty rating. And in uh, Bronco Horvath here, he's got a uh, uh, I think it's a commit penalty rating here. Sorry, just a second. I know it's yeah okay. Uh, Horvath's commit penalty rating is 98 and his draw penalty rating is 97. So it's kind of neat that they have a separate uh, penalty ratings depending on how, whether they commit or draw penalties. So basically this the number from the player result card has to be um, greater than uh, the penalty rating on the player's card and it also, it also has to coincide with uh, the officiating level. So in this uh, call it tight um, thing means that uh, there's going to be a, a lot more penalties called in this game. So that means that if any of these boxes up here are filled in with a color, that means there's and, and uh, that that number um, is greater than the player's penalty number, then it's going to be a penalty called. Uh, the single box here means that if uh, there there's a uh, if we're in the if we're in let them play mode, um, that would be a a number. If the number this 100 number was uh, 80 to 100, or greater than 80, uh, then um, they would just be in a let them play mode, and then um, there would only be a penalty if there was like a single colored box here at the top. Um, so that's 20% chance of uh, having let them play, 20% chance of uh, call it tight, and then. Uh, 60% uh, chance of just uh, normal. So, okay. There's also uh, another thing you check for at the beginning is uh, the enforcers, and uh, you would you would uh, draw a card, and um, and I think it's uh, any number 35 and below means that the the enforcers are going to fight the first time that they're on the ice. Uh, there's there's some different scenarios. There, like uh, one to twenty is like if the the Enforcers are eyeing each other during the pregame skate or something like that or whatever. So there's some bit of a story I've uh, built into the thing here. So um, I don't play with the enforcers thing, so I'm not going to bother with that. Okay. All right. So um, let's get going here. So the first thing we do is a face off. So um, obviously, so uh, up in the top right hand corner is the face off rating of the player. And so what you do is. Um, you take the difference between the two and then uh, you would add 10. In this case they're both the same so that um, um, uh, 1 to 10 will be the visitor winning the face-off and 11 to 20 the home would win the face-off. If, um, so I'll just pick somebody else here, Frank Mahovlich was taking the face-off he's rating 8 and Bill Hayes a 7. So the difference between that is 1 and then you would add 10 to that so uh, 11 so that means um, Toronto would win the face-off on, on, on number 1 to 11, and Chicago win the face-off from 12 to 20. So we'll have uh, Rick Kelly facing off against Bill Hay, and we flip over both cards at the same time. And we look at the face-off number, which is here. 
face-off result number, which is seven. So that means Toronto wins the wins the battle, wins the face-off, and um, Red Kelly has possession of the puck. So we'll flip another card, and since we're in the neutral zone, we're going to be looking at um, this section right here. This this tells you that the center has the puck, which is uh, Red Kelly. And uh, the, these cards are meant to sort of line up from, um, line up side to side. So you can just sort of line them up like this. So on the right hand, it's the left hand card in the neutral zone section. It says uh, right defense with a red background color. So that uh, the neutral zone is set up like a, um, a stoplight. So green light, yellow light, red light. Uh, green light means that the, the offensive player uh, is not being challenged or he can just freely skate into the offensive zone. Uh, yellow light means that there, um, uh, there's going to be some uh, caution, I guess, uh, where um, the different options are to chip and chase or skate or pass into the zone, and you would uh, draw and check against the, the rating of the, the offensive player. Uh, but this, uh, this uh, particular situation is uh, a red light situation. So what we're going to be doing is um, comparing the uh, neutral zone rating of the center, which is Red Kelly, uh, versus the right defense on Chicago, who is uh, Moose Vasco. Sorry, it's not the neutral zone rating of Vasco we're looking at. We're going to be looking at his defense rating. So, uh, Kelly's neutral zone rating is 13. That's on a rating of 1 to 20. And Vasco's uh, defense rating is down here in the bottom corner, and his uh, rating is a 9. That's rated 1 to 10, so it's very good defense. So now I've got this chart that um, somebody on the Delphi forum uh, uh, published, or, or I got from him. Um, AFJB is his username. Uh, he's very kind enough to share that with me. So uh, basically, I'm, I'm, um, it's called a neutral zone red scenario. And so I look at the chart here. Um, Kelly's a 13 versus a defense 9. So what I'm going to do is look at the, uh, the 100 number to see... Uh, 1 to 20 means that he's going to try to go for it and, and uh, uh, get by Vasco. Uh, so, <clears throat> but uh, since Vasco's a 9, then it's, it's, uh, he's probably going to choose to dump it in. But what I do is I just, I'm, since it's uh, Kelly, I'm looking at the, the 100 number on the left side. And it's 53. So he's not going to try and get it by. He's just going to dump it in. So uh, on a... Uh, the time for the timing sequence uh, whenever the puck goes into the defensive zone like or when the offensive team crosses the blue line you move up the time 30 seconds so everything's in a 30 second increment so he's going to dump it in and we flip the card and so now we're going to look at the uh, the dump in section which is this section here and it says right away it was icing so Toronto has iced the puck and uh, and then we'll have a face-off in the Toronto end. I have a little uh, drawing of a, a little handmade drawing of a rink here, and a little token showing where the puck is and who's which direction the puck is going. Because uh, with so much going on, I find it hard. <clears throat> I find it hard to uh, keep track sometimes of uh, who has the puck, and because there can be a lot of uh, turnovers and stuff like that. Okay, so we have a face-off in the Toronto end. We flip our cards. Look at the face-off section. That's a 12. That means Chicago's won the uh, face-off. Excuse me. And the face-off has gone to the right defense, who is Vasco. So, um, because the offensive team has the uh, the puck, uh, they have um, several different options. They got six or seven options they can uh, do. Um, he can do a try to take a quality shot. He can set up a teammate. Uh, he can do a, a two-man game where he. Um, you, where you figure out uh, who to who that two mate uh, sort of pass the puck back and forth in order to advance the puck close to the net, uh, cycle the puck, uh, simply shoot the puck on net or shoot the puck wide, uh, in the hopes that maybe it'll um, cause a net scramble. Okay, so again, I'm going to be using this chart, and uh, Vasco, his we're going to be looking at his offensive rating, which is the the big number. You can see that offense eleven. And he's an 11, and so um, I'm going to be looking at the uh, this number here. The, the uh, since Vasco, 
Chicago's on the right. I'm going to be using the, the right-hand number here. And uh, it's an 18. Uh, this is just a, a sort of like a solo chart, uh, sort of to make decisions instead of making the decisions yourself. Um, that, that's what that's why I'm using this chart. Uh, you can choose to whatever you want. Um, sorry, I should just go back here. Um, here's the here's Vasco's setup rating. This is one to ten. His quality shot rating is one to ten, but it's a blank, so I guess he never takes a quality shot, or he can never get off a quality shot. And um, and uh, so that you know, if you're doing, um, if you don't want to use uh, that chart to make the decisions, you can uh, figure that out. You can uh, figure that out yourself from these ratings. Um, just for just as a comparison here, Bobby Hall, you can see he's got a setup rating of four and a quality shot rating of seven. So you're more likely to try, have Bobby Hall try for a, with a quality shot because it's a seven out of ten chance that it's going to uh, that it's going to work. Um, okay, so um, since the number is 18. Uh, look at my chart. Uh, Vasco's an offense 11 and 18. So that means he's going to try to uh, set up somebody. Uh, Vasco's setup rating is a three. So we're going to be we're going to draw a new card and we're going to look at the red number on the right hand side since it's Chicago and it's a three. So that means he's going to uh, set up a teammate uh, for a shot on net. Now to find out which teammate it is, you look at this section here. Uh, it says D forward, so it means that, uh, it's going to be a forward, and uh, and what you're looking at here is that uh, this rating, the, the letter grade here, uh, Bobby Hull's an A, uh, Bill Hayes a B, Murray Balfour's a C. Uh, since it's a, a D rated forward, I, um, we'll just um, take... Um, the highest one in this instance. If that said A forward, then it would be Bobby Hull. Um, there are some lines where um, um, it might say uh, B forward, but there's no nobody higher than a B on the line, so you would just take the uh, the first C rated forward or the first D rated forward. And if there's a tie, there's a there, there's a um, method to figure out who uh, actually takes the shot. So in this case, uh, Vasco is going to set up Bobby Hull for the shot. So, um, now since we've determined that um, a shot is going to take place, uh, we look at this top area here for any things that might say block shot or in this case it says deflection. So there could be a deflection on the play and then you look at, sorry, uh, for a deflection you look at uh, this tells you who the player is that would be uh, deflecting the puck. And it says right defense star. Vasco is the one who's setting it up, so he's not going to be deflecting the puck. The star means that <clears throat> the defenseman is uh, pinching in and helping out with the play, and he's going to deflect it. Um, uh, the, you know, you'll see this in this uh, zone play section and some of these other ones. Um, it, it's uh, like a risk-reward thing. Uh, um, the reward is that uh, they might get a, a good shot at, at net, but uh, the risk is that if uh, they fail to make the play, then the opposition will get a, a rush transition play where they get an odd man rush or, or a, a very good chance at a shot at, at the other end. So, um, yeah, okay, so uh, so in this case uh, there's not going to be a deflection. So what we do is we flip uh, flip the cards and then we're going we're gonna to look at the um, this uh, 100 number here. So 67. So s compare that with uh, Hull's uh, shot uh, shot quality rating, I guess you call it. Um, it's 82, so it's within his thing. So the shot is on net. And um, in this game, uh, the uh, this number is also used uh, to determine uh, the difficulty of the shot. So anything with a 1 to 50 is termed a difficult shot, and anything um, 51 and up to the uh, player's rating number is a uh, easy shot. If this number, the 67 number, was outside of Hull's um, rating, uh, his accuracy rating, then uh, the shot would be um, would miss the net, and then it would be a loose puck scenario. So, um, <clears throat> so it's a, uh, it's, so there's two things here. So, there's the quality of the shot. So you can have a normal quality shot, 
um, a high quality shot and a low quality shot. In this instance where, he sets, where a player sets up a teammate it's called a quality shot. And uh, where that will come in is that when you look at the goalie card, uh, they have three numbers here in the top left. Um, uh, the uh, the left hand number is uh, the goalie's uh, save range on a high quality shot. The second number is for a normal quality shot, and the third number is for a low quality shot. So that means that uh, if when in after you draw the the card the second time to see what to compare it against the goalie's rating, um, you know there's a 14% chance that uh, the the shot on net will be a goal with a high quality shot, 7% um, with a regular quality shot, and 1% with a low quality shot, which makes sense. So, okay, so we, um, so yeah, so we have the quality of the shot, and then we also have the difficulty level of the shot. The difficulty level shot of the shot comes into the second part here too. So, um, the shot result here is a 41. So um, that you compare that with uh, the ratings, it's well below uh, the 93, which is the quality shot uh, number to look at. And uh, Bauer has made the save. Now, there's two columns here, and this is where we look at to see what happens with the puck. Um, this left-hand column here is for um, easy shots, and this second column here is for the difficult shots. So it just means since um, we have a result of 41, so we look at and it's a, it was a um, it was an easy shot from Hall from the 67. <clears throat> so we look at the first uh, first digit of the um, of the uh, of the shot here four, and we compare that with the uh, the number here, and the four is uh, equal to or less than the first number here. So that means that Bauer has saved the puck and he covers it up for a faceoff. If uh, that first digit was uh, six or higher, then uh, that means uh, he would save he would have saved the puck and the puck would be in the corner. For a difficult shot, uh, uh, you can see that uh, there could be chances for a rebound. So you have a difficult shot and uh, that first uh, digit of the number was an eight, uh, then there'd be a possibility for a rebound. And then uh, that would be a check to see if the defense clears the puck. And then if it's a uh, uh, nine, then you would have a rebound shot. And then that would be an, almost like an automatic uh, shot from a, a particular player on the, on the um, offensive team. Okay, so Bauer has uh, saved the puck. There's a face-off, and um, <clears throat> we, move, we advance the time to one minute. So uh, every face-off, what you have to do is check uh, this. Uh, you can see it says after whistle section. You want to see if there's any activity. This is another neat feature of this game is that uh, you can have um, an agitator scenario. You can have scrums. I'll just, I can just see it on the card before here. Here. Um, <clears throat> You can have a scrum. It says agitated, hot, and boiling. So what, what you look uh, that means um, you start off the game with a normal game intensity, unless you're playing back-to-back uh, -back games and there were certain incidents that happened in the previous game. Um, but you start off with normal. Um, this game has uh, another thing called a chippiness meter. So that every time, um, not every time, but uh, sometimes when there's uh, an agitator scenario or um, or these scrums. Um, the chart will tell you that uh, you know increase the chippiness meter by uh, by two, and uh, once the chippiness meter gets to ten, then you would increase the game intensity. So uh, up to uh, um, say agitated. So if the game uh, started off with um, intensity normal, um, and then it got to the point where it was agitated, and you and you had a whistle, and then this would come up, uh, that would mean. Uh, you would check to see what happened with the scrum because it, the, the game intensity level was that agitated. So uh, hopefully uh, that'll come up. It's, it's, um, and I can refer you to the chart. If not, I'll, I'll show you the chart. Okay, uh, just before we continue, I just, there's one other thing I wanted to show you, uh, some of the other game materials. Um, this is a, a board that has the, uh, the timing, timing chart here. Uh, this thing is where you, this section here is where you keep track of the momentum points. Um, uh, teams can accumulate uh, momentum points um, by uh, delivering like a big hit 
or uh, killing off a penalty, scoring a goal. Um, if there's an agitator scenario uh, where um, one team ag tries uh, agitates another one, but there's no retaliation, uh, the team that does the agitating gets a momentum bump. Uh, goalie making a great save or a breakaway save or um, drawing a penalty in an agitator scenario, things like that, or uh, winning a fight. Uh, so you keep track of these points as you go along. Um, of course, only one team can have momentum at any one time, so whoever has the edge, uh, you would use um, this, uh, these momentum markers that come up here. Um, there's a little, um, this is a little uh, chart that comes with the game. I've printed this out um, where, like, say, a team has uh, three momentum points and they're at momentum level one. Uh, where that comes into the game later is that um, and when you're trying to do a breakout, um, this is on the, the left card here, you see M01. Um, in a breakout scenario, if this comes up and uh, if you're the team that has the momentum, then um, you, your breakout is automatically successful. Uh, so you automatically move to the neutral zone. So uh, that's where it comes in mainly. Um, and uh, the, the scale along the top is the uh, chippiness meter that I was talking about before. Um, and that can, uh, <clears throat> that's um, the chippiness meter uh, can accumulate in a couple of different ways, I think I mentioned already. Um, but this is uh, the game score sheet here, um, where you keep track of the number of uh, regular hits and uh, big hits. So um, basically, a one hit uh, result from the cards is equal to about two and a half. Uh, hits in real life. So there's, there's an abstraction there. So uh, you can see uh, two and a half is rounded up to three and seven and a half is rounded up to eight. So if you get uh, four four hit results, say if on the visitor team, the visitor delivers four hits, uh, they would uh, actually, it's, it's considered as ten hits. Um, same thing with the home team. And so uh, when um, both teams reach um, uh, a level at the tens, like you know, if, when both teams reach ten, you would increase the chippiness meter by one. When both teams get to twenty, then you increase the chippiness meter another another one. So, um, I played a game recently where the chippiness meter got up to six, and uh, uh, what that means is that, uh, as I mentioned earlier, when it gets up to ten, uh, that means uh, you increase the game intensity from normal to agitated and then from ag agitated to hot and then hot to boiling and it just means that there's more chances of fights and scrums and stuff like that um, yeah and yeah I, and I just wanted to show you these uh, charts that I have standing up here um, the game comes with these uh, cheat seat cheat sheets and what I've done is I've just sort of re uh, retyped them and basically you know um, putting all the information that are on the cheat sheets that come with the game, but then I've added some notes for my own um, for my own uh, benefit. Um, uh, basically, it's um, uh, it's uh, there's situations where um, some results mean that you draw a new card and flip to the next results, and there's some results where you read from the same card depending on the result. So anyway. Um, yeah, okay, so we'll get going. So we've got a uh, face-off in the Toronto end. So we flip our cards, and uh, the result is a two, so that means Toronto has uh, won the face-off. Now, excuse me, uh, since Toronto has won the face-off, they're in the defensive zone, it's an automatic uh, breakout four-check scenario. And uh, once you've um, determined that the defensive team has the puck and has a chance to break out, you look at uh, the... Um, the numbers here, you combine them to get a number out of 100. So the number is 47. So, um, and for, um, if the number is uh, f um, from 1 to 50, then it's a breakout scenario, and um, and then if, if the number is uh, above 50, then it's a four-check scenario. So the number is 47, Toronto's going to try to break out. So now we look at the bottom of the card here, and <clears throat> for uh, breakout scenario look on the right hand side it's kind of hard to read because it's it's um, it's um, 
it's a dark uh, dark color thing against a black background and uh, for me that's really hard to see but I, I know that from the color combination that it's a, uh, a breakout scenario so um, Toronto is in a four check two um, uh, configuration so they're going to send two four checkers in um, so it's a breakout scenario so, look, so it's going to be a breakout and then you look at this position here on the right hand side which means the right defense is the one who's going to be trying to do the breakout if it was a four check you would look at the four check situation on the left hand side and the position on the right hand side so it's uh, going to be a breakout scenario with the right defenseman. The right defenseman is Alan Stanley. And so what we're going to be looking at is his breakout rating, this BO rating here in the middle. And it's a 20. And that's a 1 to 20 rating. So you know right there that it's going to be an automatic uh, breakout, successful breakout for Toronto. So we flip the card and we look at the, uh, the blue number for that. Um, it's kind of hard to read here, but it's a 10. That 10 is just there. Uh, it, that It's in yellow because uh, that could uh, trigger an auxiliary play or, uh, I guess, a, a rare play. Um, in this case, uh, when you see a 10 like that, you look at the, uh, the 100 number on the opposite uh, card, and if it ended in a 0, then there would be an auxiliary play. It, there isn't in this case. So um, the blue number 10, that's well within Stanley's uh, breakout rating of 20. Um, but uh, you're also going to be checking on this breakout thing to see if uh, the the, uh, the blue number from the card is also within the player's uh, headman rating, which is this HM rating beside the breakout rating. So it's not. So it's just a regular breakout. So Toronto gets to the neutral zone. So now we look at um, the neutral zone section of the card here. And uh, Red Kelly has the puck. And it's a neutral zone red, and the, the player on the defensive team who's challenging is the right wing. So that's Murray Balfour. So Balfour has a defense rating of 3. So if you were just uh, making a decision yourself, you'd probably uh, say, okay, well, Kelly's going to try to get around Mur Murray Balfour to skate into the zone. Um, uh, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll just do that. So we flip a card, and what we're going to do is check the uh, red number against Balfour's defense number. So the red number seven, that's outside uh, Balfour's defense number. So Kelly has entered the Chicago zone. And that uh, means that you move up the timer to 130. So uh, Kelly is now in the uh, Chicago zone. And I'm going to use the chart to decide what he's going to be doing with the puck. Uh, Kelly has an offense rating of 16. And so uh, I'm looking at the chart here, the number Block number here is 7, and he's a 16, so it's a QS, which means he's going to try to do a quality shot. So we're going to flip the card and check the, uh, the red number on the left card. I'm using the left card because it's um, Toronto's on the left, Chicago's on the right. That's how, that's how I'm doing it. Um, you can do it however you like. You could do all sorts of checks from, do all your checks from the right-hand side or certain checks on the left-hand side. That, that's just the way I do it. So um, Kelly's going to try for a quality shot. His quality shot rating is a 4, but the, uh, the red number here is a 10. So uh, he fails to um, do a quality shot, get a quality scoring chance. And so um, since that's out of range, um, it's either going to be a loose puck or the defense is going to uh, get the puck automatically with a possible hit. And since the number the number 10 is an even number, uh, the defense gets the puck automatically. And to find out who gets the puck, you look at this zone play section. Uh, the position on the left is the offensive team, and the position on the right is the defensive team. So um, Bobby Hall is going to get the puck, and we're going to check um, uh, his uh, hit rating to see if he delivers a hit at the same time. Now, uh, I'm just going to flip a card to see what happens. So first thing you have to check um, before that is you check this uh, hit section of the cards here. Um, you see hit minus, hit, and hit plus, depending on um, what the physical level of play that the player, the team is playing. So by default, I'm just going with a regular hit. And since this is blank, that means uh, 
the, he's not going to be delivering the hit. If it said the word hit here, then I would check um, Bobby Hull's hit rating in uh, his defensive zone to see if uh, the number corresponded to that. So you can see um, at the bottom of the card they have ratings for the neutral zone and ratings for the defensive zone. So they actually have two different hit ratings depending on where the hit takes place, which is kind of neat. So um, if uh, if that if they said the word hit over here on the left hand side, and if the uh, the uh, the red number on the the right card uh, was within um, Hull's hit rating or his big hit rating, then he would deliver a hit. And uh, when you deliver a hit, you would just mark that on the score sheet as a hit, and then you would just continue on from there. So Chicago has recovered the puck, and uh, because uh, they have, it's you go to the automatic breakout four check scenario. Look at the number here is 53, so it's it's above 50, so that means it's a four check. So Toronto is going to be applying some four checking pressure. So we look at we look here on the the left side to see what's going to happen under a four check two. It's a, a zone regroup. So that means that uh, Chicago automatically proceeds to the neutral zone, and uh, Toronto is uh, sort of backed off and let them come out. And then you flip a card and you look at the uh, the neutral zone section, and in this zone regroup um, scenario, um, the right hand side tells you which the position number of the offensive team. So that's the right defense, uh, Moose Vasco, and then you would look at the position number on the um, the left hand side in the neutral zone section. That's also the right defense. So, um, and it's considered a neutral zone red situation at this thing in a zone regroup uh, situation. Uh, and automatically turns into a, a neutral zone red uh, scenario. So, uh, so it's Vasco uh, in the neutral zone trying to move the puck down, and uh, Alan Stanley on Toronto is the one who's trying to um, uh, challenge him. Uh, Stanley, uh, his defense rating is a nine. Vasco's rating is a sixteen. So. Um, Instead of using the chart to decide if uh, there's only a you know one in ten chance that he's going to get by Alan Stanley, so he's just going to dump the puck. So he dump the puck. That triggers a time sequence, so it's, so it's two minutes. So we'll change lines. I'll just I just move a token here. Uh, by the way, um, for the purposes of this video, I've I've put the the cards out on the table like this in a grid thing, but normally I use uh, these um, plastic. Uh, plastic uh, card holders. Uh, these are like trading card holders um, that you can get at a hobby shop and uh, you can see there's there's a card there. You can get uh, all four lines in one sheet and, uh, and these cards fit very well into these uh, 12 pocket per page ones. Um, Ultra Pro is the name of the company that makes them in case, uh, in case you're wondering about that. Okay, so we've changed lines. Um, Chicago's dumped the puck into the Toronto end, and so we've uh, we flipped the cards, and then we look at the uh, the dump in the dump in uh, four check uh, section, and it says icing question mark. So now we're going to be checking to see if uh, if it actually is an icing. So in in an ice in an icing possible icing situation, we're going to be looking at the uh, the blue number. And we're going to be comparing that with the player's um, FCO rating, which I guess is his offensive forecheck rating. Uh, that was Vasco. Vasco's FCO rating is a 5, so I'll draw a card. <clears throat> and uh, the number is 10. Uh, we've had a lot of those come up, but that's not, that's not, not usual. It's uh, these, these 10s and the yellow uh, come up uh, once in a while, but having 3 in the space of a few minutes is very unusual. Okay, excuse me. Um, uh, so that's uh, out of range. That's outside of Asco's range. So that's uh, it's an automatic icing. So Chicago's iced the puck. So we're gonna um, <clears throat> face off in the Chicago end. Okay. So in the, oh yeah. So we have, since we have a face off, we check the after whistle section, and it's blank. So nothing nothing happens after the whistle. So since we have uh, new lines on the ice, we have uh, Dave Keon facing off against Stan Makita. 
so you can see the difference here is 2 in favor of uh, Toronto so you add 10 to that, it's 12 so a result of 1 to 12 will have uh, Toronto winning the faceoff and Makita and uh, result of 13 to 20 will be Chicago draw a new card faceoff face -off rating is a faceoff number is a 3 so Toronto wins the puck and excuse me, George Armstrong has the puck so Armstrong, his offense rating is 14, um, and uh, we're going to have him try to set up somebody. His setup rating is a 4, so we'll draw another card, and his setup rating is a 5. So he fails to uh, set up a teammate, and since the, the result is odd, that means it's an automatic loose puck. <clears throat> now, um, since Armstrong failed to make the play, we're going to be checking for a penalty. Now the number here is 95. Uh, Armstrong's uh, commit penalty rating is 98. So right there, it's it's not a penalty. It's not not going to be a penalty because this number here is is below his commit penalty rating. It would have to be a, a 99 <coughs> or a 100 up here for that to happen. And uh, the boxes here would have to be uh, uh, any color in this case because the officiating is call it tight. So, uh, so no penalty on Armstrong for failing to make that play. For, he didn't commit a penalty. Uh, so it's a loose puck. So we draw the flip the cards again, and we're going to be looking at uh, this section here, which is the uh, the in zone play. So it says defense, play the puck, and the defensive player is the left defense. So we're going to be looking at the, uh, for a defense play puck scenario, we're going to be looking at the defense rating of the uh, left defense on Chicago. And, um, and that's Jack Evans, his defense rating is a 9. So he's probably going to be successful in playing the puck because the, the red range is 1 to 10. So we flip the card, check the red number is 6. So uh, Evans is successful in playing the puck. Uh, he he, uh, he gets possession of the puck. And because uh, this is a loose puck scenario, uh, he makes the play, so it's a possibility that he draws a penalty. But we look at the, the penalty number here is a 10, so it's automatically it's not within his penalty. All the penalty ranges are up in the usually in the 90s, there's a few that are in the, started in the 80s, so so it's just, I just wanted to tell you that, you know, this is the kind of checks that you have to make um, so uh, Evans makes the play on the loose puck, but he does not uh, draw a penalty in this case so, uh, the other thing you want to check for um, on some cards is that, um, I'll just find one here, yeah, you'll see this uh, D uh, thing here, D-5, and there's there's different numbers, I think it goes up to 7 or something like that, so it goes from D, D-1, D-2, D-3, and that means there's a, a dirty play made. So whenever a, a player makes a defensive play, you want to check that section to see if uh, somebody makes a dirty play. Uh, dirty play level starts off at 0, so at this at this time, you know, it would, it would only be a dirty play if there was simply the letter D there. If there was a D with a number on it, then at this point there would no there would be no dirty play. So that's another thing that uh, you, you keep track of is uh, the number of dirty plays. And that, uh, that's on the bottom of the score sheet here. And you can see, uh, see once a, um, a team has made uh, three dirty plays, um, they're up into the uh, uh, D, D1 level. Okay, so um, so Evans has the puck, and they're in the defensive zone, so it's a, a breakout forecheck um, scenario. So we look at the number here; it's, it's uh, zero zero, and so that's a forecheck. So we look at the forecheck section here. So Toronto's going to apply pressure, and it's going to be from the right wing. So and that's and that's um, thing we're going to be checking um, the blue number with um, Armstrong's uh, FCD rating, which is down, down here. So his FCD rating is a 9, so there's about a 50% chance that he'll uh, be successful. So we check the blue number on the left card, because it's Toronto doing the forechecking, 
and it's within Armstrong's FCD rating, so he's successful at applying pressure. So uh, that means that Toronto uh, gets the puck, so it's a, a turnover. So Toronto gets the puck, and um, Armstrong, we'll see what Armstrong does with it. So Armstrong's uh, offense 14, and I'm going to use the chart here, so... Um, well, I'm, no, I'm not going to use a chart, actually. I'm going to uh, uh, pick a different scenario, one that we've seen before. Okay, so let's say he's going to try a, uh, uh, a shot at the net. Let's, uh, let's do that. Yeah, okay, let's do a shot at the net. So uh, Armstrong's decided that he's going to take a shot at the net. So once you've determined that a shot is going to take place, that's when you look at uh, this section up here for uh, the defle uh, block shot or deflection. Um, as you can see, here's an example of one where it's a block slash screen or a block shot out of play. So that's where you would look. Okay, so there's a possible deflection. You look at the uh, the person who might be deflecting it, and it's the left wing. So that's um, Dick Duff. And for deflect possible deflections, what you're going to be looking at on the next draw of the card is uh, the net rating, which is 3. Okay, so Armstrong's going to take a shot at net. It could be deflected by Duff. So we'll look at the uh, the red number to see about the possible deflection. It's six, so that's above Duff's rating net rating of three. So there's no deflection possible here. So now we look at uh, this number here to see uh, the difficulty level of the shot. It's a twelve, so that's below fifty. So it's a difficult shot. Um, and uh, since he decided to take a um, just a shot at the net in this scenario, um, it's considered a uh, low quality shot. So there's a very little chance that it'll it'll go it'll um, it'll score a goal. So it's a low quality shot, but it's a difficult shot. So then we flip the cards again, and it's an O2. So um, Glenn Hall uh, saves it easily. Because um, his uh, low quality shot range is 99, it would have to be a, a 100 for it to be a possible goal. And since it's a difficult shot, um, we look at this column here, the second one, where the numbers in the boxes, and uh, the first digit of the uh, the shot result is a zero, and that's below four. So Hall saves it and covers it up for a faceoff. Faceoff. So we have an agitator scenario here after the whistle. So what we do is we draw a card, new cards and we look at the uh, the left hand side 100 number here is an 85 and we're going to look at uh, this chart here which is the uh, the, the uh, penalties um, agitator scenario chart here and so we look at down at this agitator section here and the number was 85 and so we look we look at here, so um, 85 is above 75, so we look at this, it's this possible thing here. So it says the visiting team agitator gets under the skin of the opponent, and we check for a possible fight. So I'm just going to keep that handy because we have to look at things. So, so there could be a fight here. So um, the visiting team agitator, so we, we're going to be uh, drawing a card to see who the agitator is going to be. Okay, so... We look at the uh, the left uh, 100 number here, 75, and we look at the uh, sorry the agitator section here, number 75, and uh, we look here and it's down here. So the uh, the agitator is the uh, right defense on the visiting team. So that's Bob Bond, and we look at the uh, the number. 100 number on the right hand side 75 to see who the retaliator is so 75 corresponds to the left defense so it's Bob Bond who's agitating and Jack Evans is uh, on Chicago is the retaliator so um, we draw another card here and we look at this uh, number here 33 we go back to this ch agitator chart and we look at this column here. 33 is below 40. So the agitator uh, rating that we're looking for is a 2. So that, that means if uh, Bond has an agitator rating of 2 or more, like 2, 3, 4, or 5, 
then uh, he's successful in agitating his opponent. And then we also look at uh, this number here, 59 on the right, and we're going to be checking that against the secondary penalty number of uh, Jack Evans of Chicago. So, um, so the agitator uh, number from the chart is 2, so we look on Bond's card to see what his agitator number here. It's this number here, this blue number in the middle, it's 2. So uh, that means that Bond has uh, he's, he's been successful in agitating Evans. And then, so then, then we check to see if this number 59, compare it with Jack Evans' secondary penalty number. The secondary penalty number is the number right below the agitator number, which is 92. So his uh, secondary penalty number is above uh, this number 59. Uh, so that means that Evans uh, retaliates, and uh, since um, the initial scenario said to check for a fight, that means a fight automatically happens. So, we go to the fight chart. So, um, uh, the fight chart is kind of interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll go through this, um, even though this is going to take a while. Um, it's going to be a long video, folks, so <laughs> you can tell that already. Um... Sorry, I'll, it's going to be a bit slow. I've only done a fight a couple of times, so it's, I have to sort of consult the rules because I don't have this on my little uh, quick thing here. So, uh, yeah, and, I, and now I'll have to confess, I'm not sure if I do this right because there is a thing in the rules that says you check to see who's going to be in the fight. So um, you, would, you would draw cards to determine who's actually going to be uh, the fighter. And if, so it's not necessary that people who did the agitating, like it could be somebody else involved in the fight, which I guess that uh, makes sense because you can have things where somebody s starts a scrum or something like that and then two other players end up fighting. So, Okay, so uh, we draw a new card and uh, okay, so So we look on the fight card here, and uh, oh, sorry. sorry about that. So we look at the players involved. So we drew a 56 on the left hand side. So it says one L. Uh, the L means that you just look. Uh, you just look for something. So we're looking for somebody on Toronto who has. Um, the lowest agitator enforcer rating. Lowest means. Um, that person is uh, is, is um, the highest the highest uh, enforcer on the team. Lowest doesn't mean um, uh, I, I, sorry. I can't explain that very well. I've got a cold. Um, anyway, um, so we're looking for somebody who has the lowest uh, agitator enforcer rating, um, and since the L is there um, and the lowest secondary penalty number for the fight. So I'm not going to um, bring up every card. So uh, Bon and Brewer have the lowest agitator ratings. They're both two. And uh, Bon has the lowest secondary penalty number. <clears throat> so it ends up Bon that it is going to be in the fight for Toronto. And on the right-hand side, the number is uh, 34. So 34 is also a check against 1L on Chicago. Uh, so we have uh, Stan Makita, who uh, has the lowest uh, agitator rating, which is a 2. And so uh, he's the only one with a 2 on Chicago on the ice right now. So it's going to be Bob Bond against Stan Makita. Um, now they, yeah, so they both have an agitator rating of a 2. This is kind of like the face-off scenario. So um, if, there was, if there was a difference between, say, 2 and 3, and then... Uh, uh, you would add uh, one, 10 to the difference and then um, the one with the lower rating 3 would be a 1 to 11 in a chance of uh, uh, to determine who gets the advantage so in this case uh, the, uh, there's no advantage it, it's, it's uh, sort of 1 to 10 for the visitor and, uh, <clears throat> and 11 to 20 for the home team so uh, in this case we're looking at the uh, the left, uh, the blue number on the left side, so 18. 
So that's the home team, so that means that uh, Makita has the advantage. And uh, when, uh, <clears throat> when, when, they're, when they're both tied like this, that means the home team has the advantage. So now, um, sorry, just bear with me. I don't know if you flip a card or not. Yeah, okay, at least the, the uh, so now we use the right-hand side um, blue number to see uh, what what the result of the fight is. So I'll just pull, just pull this out here. So in the, the top half here, you can see it says when the, uh, the higher rating player has the advantage. So um, the lower rated, the home team uh, has the advantage here. So, and the number, the blue number on the right side is six. So we look at six. And that's uh, below seven, so it says both pl both players land big blows, even finish. So nobody actually won the fight. So what you do, you go over and then you check to see what the effect on the momentum is. In this case, there's no change. And the chippiness meter, you empty it, so it gets reset. So if the chippiness meter is up at eight or nine, then it would be reset to zero. So um, there's a couple other things to do to resolve this. Um, Okay, so uh, we look at the uh, the black 100 number here, and 86, and uh, see if it's within um, Oh yeah, okay. To see if there's going to be an instigator or other fight results. So um, the black number is an 86. And uh, if you look in this section here, um, it doesn't fall in with the range here, so um, there would only be a, an instigator or other fight results if uh, that number was between 1 to 10 or 90 to 100, so it's 85, so nothing, nothing happens there. Um, so we also have to check for a misconduct uh, in addition to the fight. So it says to draw a new card. And uh, so we use the left uh, 100 number here, which is 37. And we check against his uh, secondary penalty number. Um, Bond's secondary penalty number is 85. Um, and so if this number from the card is equal to or greater than the secondary penalty number from the player card, then they would get a misconduct. Uh, 37 is below 85 for Bond. On this side, 73 is below Makita's secondary penalty rating of 90, so neither one gets a misconduct. And so the one last thing to check is you want to check the effect of the fight on the game. Um, so you've looked at the black 100 number here, which is the, uh, the two numbers here that you combine to get the 100 number, so it's 22. <clears throat> and then we compare that to... Uh, uh, but the current game intensity is. The game intensity is a normal. Yeah, so if the uh, black, if, in this case, if the black 100 number was 20 or less, then uh, it says cooler heads prevail. And so that means you would reset the chippiness meter, which we've already done because of, of the fight result anyway. And the dirty plays would be reset to zero as the fight released the pressure and the intensity of the game. Uh, but in this case it uh, didn't. Uh, the number is 22 is above the normal intensity so basically um, uh, in this case uh, the chippiness meter would, would remain the same like if if, we, if um, the chippiness meter said no change here um, um, this effect of the fight result uh, would also mean there would be no change to the chippiness meter so if it was already 5 or something like that this effect of the fight on the game result would still it would still be a five. Okay, so um, so Bon and Makita have been sent off for uh, fighting majors. So um, so I'll just have uh, I'm just gonna at this point I'm just gonna change lines uh, just to sort of keep it uh, simple rather than try to figure out how to substitutions. Okay, so. So, 
so we have a face-off in the um, in the Chicago end. Okay, um, one thing I forgot to mention was um, because there was a fight, there, there could be implication, implications for the momentum count. So we look at the chart here. Um, I think what happens is here is there's a, a AGI draw penalty. So since Bond uh, agitated uh, Evans on Chicago and he was able to basically draw a penalty out of it, um, get him and go him into a fight, um, that's a momentum bump of uh, plus three for Toronto. So I'll move the momentum uh, meter up to three for Toronto and I just have uh, a token to show that. <clears throat> and since uh, we're at momentum level three, momentum, three momentum points, that means um, Toronto is now at momentum level one. So I'm just going to put that uh, up at the top above them to show them their momentum level one, which is, so that could come up. Um, I don't know if that's right. Um, it could be that uh, if uh, simply that uh, the agitator uh, was just able to draw a minor penalty out of the player, but um, I'm not sure. But we'll uh, we'll we'll just go with that. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have a uh, face-off in the Chicago end, and uh, the face-off uh, players both have the same rating, so it's. So it'll be a 1 to 10 Toronto, 11 to 20 Chicago. It's a 13, so Chicago wins it. So it's an automatic uh, breakout four check thing. We check the um, number here is 59, so it's going to be a four check from Toronto. And uh, this uh, it's black, it, you can't, it's hard to see, but it says uh, four check there. So it's just going to be a regular four check. And it's four, the four check pressure is going to be coming from the center, who is Bob Pulford. So we're going to be checking uh, Pulford's uh, FCD rating on the next uh, draw of the cards. Uh, Pulford's FCD rating is a six. So um, the blue number here, the blue number here is a four. So uh, he was successful in uh, <coughs> in um, in his four check, and so the result of this is a loose puck scenario. So uh, loose puck, uh, we flip the cards and then we just check um, this section here, the zone play section, to see what happens next. So it's, in this case it says defense play the puck again and uh, the defensive player is on the right hand side here is a right wing. So the right wing is uh, Bronco Horvath and his defense rating is a 5. So we're going to flip the card and check the red number against that and his number is a six so he failed to play the puck so that means that Toronto uh, uh, recovers the puck and in that case you look at the zone play section to see uh, who recovers the puck for Toronto so that would be the left end, the left left defense who is uh, Tim Horton in this case now with the star beside it that means uh, you have to make a decision whether he's going to pinch in and um, to uh, get the puck uh, with the risk being that if he uh, on on the next check to see if uh, if he's successful uh, if he fails then it's going to be an automatic rush transition for uh, Chicago. So I think that's what we'll do because I want to I want to see if we can get a rush transition scenario just so you know what it's like. Um, but one thing we have to check here is that because there's a loose puck. Um, um, Sorry, the previous uh, play was a defense play puck, and uh, um, uh, Horvath failed to uh, um, uh, play the puck. So we take a look at the uh, penalty number up here, and it's a 98. And uh, the 98 is actually within Horvath's um, Uh, the number 98 is uh, equal to equal to um, Horvath's commit penalty rating, which is the number in red here. So we have a possible penalty, and then we're going to be looking on this side here for the number of um, colored boxes, and all three of them are showing, which means uh, that uh, there is going to be a penalty here uh, on the part of Horvath. He's committing a penalty. So... Um, 
know, since the uh, the uh, the number here that we're checking here, 98, is an even number, that means that the play uh, the play is stopped. If the, if this number was uh, odd, then the play would continue and there'd be a, a delayed penalty situation. Okay, so for just for simplicity's sake, we'll just say that Horvath gets a penalty. The, there, are, there is a chart that comes with the game where you can determine uh, uh, what kind of uh, penalty they get. You would you would check a number and then you would see what it is. So let's Hor say Horvath uh, gets a penalty. <clears throat> um, so I'm just going to flip his card over for now, just to say we'll just keep the same uh, players on the ice. Actually, no, we'll put we'll put um, Toronto's first line on the ice. And we'll keep uh, this third line of Chicago on the ice because uh, the players' defensive ratings are about the highest that they that are on here. So we've got Eric Nestorenko and Ron Murphy. So we have a power play situation. Um, again, uh, we have to, since there was a whistle, we checked the after whistle section, nothing happened. So uh, we moved the uh, time up because there was a, a play stoppage. And so we're going to have a face-off in the Chicago end. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, so we have Kelly with a face-off rating of seven. Nestorenko is a six, so um, that's uh, that's a difference of one. So a one to eleven, Toronto will win the face-off. So the um, the number is a ten, and so Toronto wins the face-off. It goes to the left wing, which is uh, Frank Mahovlich. So. Uh, Mahovlich. Um, let's see. He's going to try. He's going to try this um, two-man game. Let's say. And so, um, if in that case you would use, um, you would look at uh, the uh, zone play section, and <laughs> the offensive player to see who's the teammate is. Uh, since it's, it's since it's also the left wing, I'm just going to draw another card to see if I can get a different position here. So, so the right wing. So uh, what you're going to do is going to look add up the two the offense ratings of the two players. Uh, Mahovic is an 18. Bob Nevin is a 13. So that's 31. So we're going to draw cards again, and we're going to be looking at the uh, this 100 number here to see if it's uh, within th 31. It's not. So the, they failed to get the two main game going, and, uh, and so that and uh, the number is an even number. So it's an uh, it's an auto puck recovery by the def defense with a possible hit. Um, <clears throat> in this case, uh, you would you would look at the uh, the defensive player position and it says the center and. Uh, I think, as with most hockey games, I think when you when you're doing a penalty kill, you usually leave the center uh, position vacant. And uh, since this is a vacant position, I would I'm going to assume. Let's just say, for the sake of argument, I'm not sure if this is right or not, but uh, uh, we'll say that uh, the two-man game worked, and, and um, Toronto still has the puck. Um, so, um, so I say Stanley is going to. Uh, so you look at the offensive um, thing there under the zone play. You see um, Alan Stanley, the right defenseman, is uh, going to have possession of the puck now, and uh, uh, he's going to uh, he's going to try something. So um, I'm going to use this uh, chart here. Uh, Stanley's a 14, and the 100 number is 88. So that's a shot at the net. So, uh, so we determined that a shot at the net is happening. They don't see anything about shots or um, blocks or uh, deflections or screens. So nothing happens there. Uh, the numbers in ninety nine. Uh, so uh, when you when you're checking the shot target thing, um, whenever the this number is ninety seven to hundred, that means that the shot is wide and uh, the puck goes all the way out of the zone into the neutral zone. So now the puck is in the neutral zone. And um, and normally you just uh, draw <coughs> draw a card, and then you would look at uh, this this here to see if it says H or V. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, since it's a power play, I'm just going to make an executive decision that. Um,
sorry. Make an executive decision that uh, uh, Toronto gets the puck automatically. So, um, so now uh, um, because uh, Toronto's on the power play, we have to see if they um, successful in setting up the power play. So, uh, what happens here? Oh, the the uh, because um, Chicago cleared the cleared the zone, or because the puck went cleared the zone. Now we move the um, the timer up uh, one. In this case. Um, <clears throat> So what we have to do now is we look at the um, the defensive player on the, the left-hand card, which is the, the right defense, so that's going to be Moose Vasco. And uh, we're going to flip a card and use his defense rating and check against the, uh, check the blue number. So his defense rating is a 9, and the blue number is a 14. So um, Vasco failed to uh, break up the uh, power play, so that means that uh, Toronto is, has been successful in setting up the power play, so they're back in the Toronto end. And then when we look at uh, the zone play section for the offensive player, has the puck, so it's the left wing, so that's Frank Mahovlich. Yeah, okay, so Mahovlich has the puck. And uh, I'll use the chart this time, so. Uh, He's an 18, and the number's 94, so that means he's going to uh, deliberately shoot the puck wide. And so we're going to flip a card, and we're going to be checking um, this 100 number 81 against uh, his uh, setup rating or his offensive rating. His offensive rating is 18, his setup rating is 4, so it's well outside that, so the, there's no chance of a net scramble or anything like that. So it's uh, considered a loose puck. Flip the cards again. And so we have a different situation here now, um, where it says uh, offense dangerous. And we look at the, the zone play section on the right side to see who the offensive player is, so it's left wing. So uh, it's, again, it's Mahovlich. And offense dangerous means that the offense player is in a very um, uh, good position to get a quality shot off. So we're going to be um, looking at uh, Mahovlich's offense rating in this case, and checking is the blue number. Um, this thing about the blue numbers and the red numbers and which uh, rating that we're going to be looking at, this is all on the cheat sheets. So it's, um, you know, there's a lot to remember, but the cheat sheets are really helpful in uh, learning this game and remembering. Um, I've gotten to the point where I don't have to refer to the cheat sheets uh, nearly as much as I used to. Um, and I think, oh yeah, I know I'm going to be checking the blue number against this player's offensive rating or something like that in this case. So. Uh, it, it, it comes with time, and, it's, and like I said, it's definitely worth it. So we're going to be flipping the card and checking the blue number against uh, Mahalich's offense, and the blue number is 19, so it's actually outside his uh, offense rating. So, uh, <clears throat> so that means um, it's uh, Chicago automatically gets the puck uh, with a possible hit. So we check the hit section, and it does actually say hit and then we have to look over on the right hand side where it, where it says hit or it might say the word physical here and we're looking for somebody who has a hit rating of five the player that you're going to be checking with is the left wing on the defense the def and in this case it's uh, Ron Murphy uh, Ron Murphy and they're uh, looking in the defensive section not the neutral zone section and uh, the hit number was five from the card but his hit rating is only a three so he recovers the puck, but he does not deliver a hit. So, uh, since uh, um, Chicago's killing a penalty, and uh, uh, they can um, they can try to uh, clear the zone. Um, sorry, it's, it's, I haven't done penalties very much. Uh, dealt with penalty kills very much, so. Um, I just have to look at my cheat sheets here to see what's what happens next. Okay, I think uh, in this case uh, we treat it like as if uh, Chicago won uh, the defensive zone faceoff. So we're going to flip the card and check uh, the, the blue number, 19. And um, 
we're going to check it against his neutral zone rating. Um, Murphy's uh, neutral zone rating is a 15. So, uh, or, if it, or if the red number, 2, is in his defense rating. So the red number, it, 2, is less than his defense rating is 5. So Murphy is successful in uh, clearing, clearing, the zone out to the new, clearing the puck out to the neutral zone. So we advance the puck. <coughs> um, advance the time to uh, the next time sequence. Um, I forgot to keep track of when the penalty started, so I'm just going to say that the penalty is over now. And uh, we'll flip a card and see who has possession of the puck in the neutral zone. Uh, it says an H here, so that means Chicago actually has, has the puck in the neutral zone. So then we look at the neutral zone section. It's the right winger who has the puck. And on the left-hand side here, it says left wing with a yellow background. Uh, <clears throat> so what we're going to do in this situation is uh, compare the neutral zone ratings of the two players involved. So uh, Chicago, it's Murray Balfour, the right wing. His neutral zone rating is a 13. And the left wing on Toronto is Mahovlich, who is also a 13. So when they match up like that, when, they're, when they're, there's no advantage to the offensive and defensive player, mark a time sequence uh, just to simulate the fact that there might be a, a battle for the puck in the neutral zone and uh, and then we draw a new card and we look at the neutral zone section again see who has the puck so it says H again so Chicago has the puck again and it's uh, Balfour has the puck and it's a green so that means that Balfour gets to enter the Toronto zone unhindered and um, so, um, so what we can do is see what uh, Balfour's going to be up to. So his offense rating is a 13. And remember here it's 15. So he's going to try and take a quality shot. Uh, Balfour's quality shot rating is a 3. And uh, the red number here is a 4. So he f doesn't do the quality shot. Um, since he failed to make a move, you check the, uh, the penalty number. His number is 48. It's well below his penalty number, so there's no possible penalty there. Excuse me. And um, and uh, the number uh, is a 4. And um, since it's an even number, it's, uh, um, it's an auto puck recovery by Toronto with a possible hit. And you look on the zone play section for the defensive players, the left wing, so Mahovlich is the one who gets the puck. Uh, we look at the hit section, hit is there, and physical is five. So we look at uh, Mahovlich's card, his physical rating is a seven, so he, he, um, he lays on the body to get uh, the puck, so uh, that's considered a hit. So I, I mark a hit for Toronto on the... Uh, on the score sheet. I just marked it low right there. And Mahalic has the puck. So Mahalic has the puck in their own zone and uh, they're going to try to do the breakout four check thing. So the number here is 91. So that's a four check situation from Chicago. We look at um, the four check two there. It's going to be a four check. And the position here is in left wing. Uh, Yes, and um, just so you know, um, Mahalich made the defensive move to, to get the puck, and uh, we see a dirty play thing, but the number is six, and uh, so that's too high, so there's no dirty play involved. <clears throat> so it's a four-check pressure from the left wing on Chicago, and that is Bobby Hull. Hull's uh, rating is an 18, so he's probably going to get the puck. Um, <clears throat> now we're checking the blue number against Hull's rating, so it's an 11, so uh, Hull uh, gets the puck, or no, uh, he doesn't get the puck, it's, it's uh, a loose puck. So we uh, flip the cards again and find out one here, so it's a defense play puck, and uh, the defensive player is the uh, left defense, so that's uh, Tim Horton. <coughs> And his uh, defense rating is a 9. <clears throat> so we flip the cards. And we look at the red number here up here on the left side. Because it's Toronto. 
and it's a seven, so that's within his um, his his rating. His rating, so he he's successful in playing the puck. So uh, Toronto recovers the puck, and we also check to see if there's going to be a hit. Sorry. Um, so the hit uh, hit thing says the word hit here, and the big hit rating says four. So I'm going to check check Horton's card. In, in the defensive zone, and his big hit rating is four. So um, Horton recovers a puck and delivers a big hit at the same time. So we mark another hit on the, uh, the hit tracker there in the score sheet. So Toronto has actually five, and because it's a big hit, uh, we move the momentum counter up one. Um, Toronto uh, gets another momentum point for delivering a big hit. And, uh, And we're at, they're at four momentum points, so they're still at momentum level one. Okay, so uh, Horton has the puck for Toronto in his own end, so it's a breakout four-check scenario. Uh, zero eight, which means it's a four-check, because it's below 50. So we look in the four-check section here on the right side. Or the breakout thing, it's, it's going to be a stretch pass. And it's going to be from the left defense, who is Horton. <clears throat> now, uh, Horton's uh, breakout rating is a 20, so we know that this is going to automatically uh, work. <clears throat> and since it's from a stretch pass, this is going to uh, start a, uh, a rush transition scenario for Toronto. So, we look at the transition, transition section of the card. And we look on the left-hand side here, and it's going to be an odd man rush, a three on two for Toronto. And this uh, position here is the defensive player is going to try to break up the rush. And it's the left defense. So that's Pierre Pilot. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so what we're going to do is uh, draw a new card, and we're going to be checking, um, since it's an odd man rush, we're going to be checking the blue number against Pilot's uh, defense number. If it was just a transition thing, then we'd be checking the red number, because I guess there's more better chance of him breaking it up. Pilot's defense number is a 9, so the blue number here on the right card is 13, so he does not break up the odd man rush. So that means that Toronto is going to get a high quality shot from here and there's going to be no chance of a block block shot on this and we're going to use the uh, the 100 number from this card to, to find out uh, what's going to happen next. So in a rush transition uh, scenario um, if the if it's successful um, we, this number here fits uh, 1 to 47 then um, the player is going to take a shot if it's uh, 48 to 94, that means the uh, uh, player is going to pass it to a teammate. And if it's uh, 95 to 100, then he's going to do a drop pass. But uh, since this is a, uh, a 2, it's going to be a high-quality shot. So we look at the transition section, and that will tell us the player is going to get the shot. That's the right wing. In this case, it's uh, Bob Nevin. So it's going to be a high quality shot from Bob Nevin. So now we determine that there's going to be a shot. So we look at the, the top part of the left hand side here and we see the word screen. So there's a possibility that um, somebody's going to screen screen the shot against the goalie. And we look at uh, I'm sorry, we look at uh, this this section here to see who's going to screen it. It's going to be the left wing. And that's Mahovlich. <clears throat> and his net rating is a 5. So we look on the, the left hand side, the red number is a 3, so Mahovlich is going to be screening this shot from Nevin. So it's um, this, what this is going to do is it's going to trigger a um, um, a check against Glenn Hall's uh, rebound control rating. But uh, that's not going to happen because um, the shot is off target. Um, Nevin's uh, shot Accuracy rate shot on target rating is 78 and we have a 95 here. So um, the shot is uh, wide and we have a loose puck. Uh, 
And so loose puck, we just look at uh, this section here. Um, it says defense play the man, and the defense player who we're going to be checking against is the center. So it's uh, that's Chicago's center, that's Bill Hay. And what we're going to be doing is checking for play the man, we're going to be checking his hit, hit rating against uh, this number here, 1. Um, yeah, so we look at the red number, it's a 1. And then Bill Hay, we look at his defense, and it's within his hit rating, and it's also within his big hit rating. So Hay delivers a big hit for Chicago, so that triggers a momentum bump of 1 for Chicago. So Chicago now has 1 momentum point. Toronto still has 4, so Toronto still has a momentum. And uh, we also mark off um, a hit on the hit tracker on the score sheet. So uh, they recover the puck. Okay, um, I'll just uh, stop there. I just want to go through the uh, scenario. So let's just say, um, <clears throat> let's just say Nevin's shot was on target um, back there. So we'll just uh, we'll just flip the cards here again and. Uh, and this is the check against the goalie thing, so it's a 46, which is well within uh, Glenn Hall's high quality uh, rating is uh, 86. So the, if it was above 86, then it would be a possible goal. So it's 46, um, and let's just say it was a uh, <clears throat> let's just say it was a, a difficult shot, and. Um, and uh, the, the first digit of the thing here was an 8, so that would um, be a possible uh, rebound. <clears throat> no, actually, since uh, that, that, that shot, we determined that the shot was going to be screened if it was on target, so it's, it, was, it would automatically uh, trigger a, um, um, a rebound control check against Hall. So uh, the rebound control number is this big blue number here, 16. And what happens is that you look, check, um, we'll draw another card, and we'll check the blue number in the, uh, on the right-hand side, since Chicago's on the right, and we'll compare that with um, <coughs> the rebound control number. Um, uh, this one's a little bit complicated, is that um, you're, you're checking against sort of four different ranges. Um, there's, call, there's a rebound control number, which is 16, and there's a low rebound control number, which is that control number minus 10. So... In this case, um, because uh, in this case, uh, the number is one. <clears throat> so any number from one up to the low rebound control number. So Hall's rebound control number is 16. His low rebound control number is six. So any number from one to six means that he covers it up. Um, if the number was between six and 10, uh, the puck would, he would save and the puck would go to the corner. Um, if the number was from 11 up to 16, up to his rebound control number, then it would be a rebound. Uh, if the number was above 16, or sorry, if the number was above 16, then it would be a rebound shot. Um, so in this case, uh, the blue number is a 1. Uh, Hall saves and covers it up. So let's just say that uh, um, this blue number was um, uh, 19 or something like that, above his uh, rebound control number. So it's a rebound shot. So uh, that means the goalie saves the puck and then um, uh, a person on Toronto would, uh, would get an automatic high quality shot. Uh, basically it's um, <clears throat> um, the, the, what happens is uh, that the goalie is considered out of position to get the rebound so you're going to be looking at his recover rating. So um, if that's the case uh, you would go use this uh, section here to determine who would get the rebound shot, and it says B defense. So it'd be one of the defensemen would get the automatic rebound shot, the high quality shot, and we're looking at somebody who's rated at B. Uh, the two Toronto players are rated C, and since they're both rated C, you look on this the left hand left hand card here, and it'll have an L or an R here, and since um, since it's an L, it would be the left defense who would be taking the shot. So Tim Horton would be getting the, the rebound shot. And we're going to be checking against Glenn Hall's recovery rating, which is this one here, 9. And we're going to be checking the blue number uh, for that, I believe. Sorry, let me just check that. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, draw the card. The blue number is a 7. That's within Hall's uh, recovery rating. So, Hall has made... Uh, uh, is recovered uh, enough to uh, make a diving stop. And uh, the puck is frozen. So, just wanted to show you how that worked. Um, <clears throat> I also wanted to show you uh, what happens about a possible goal situation. So let's say we go through this thing and um, the, num the 100 number here uh, is above uh, the number was above 86. So that's a possible goal. So what, the f what, what you do is you would draw another card and uh, check for a great save. And you would look at the blue number. And you would check against Hall's great save number which is 3. So in this case, uh, the blue number drawn is a 13. That's above his great save number, so Hall does not make a great save, and it would be a goal. So that, that's, how, that's how the goals work, basically. First, you determine that, you know, you look at the 100 number to see if the shot is on target, flip a card, and then you check that against the goalie card. And, and then if it's above the goalie's rating, then you do one more check to see if he makes the great save. If he makes the great save... Um, that's a momentum bump for the for the goalie's team, and you would raise his level. So in this case, if, if Hall made a great save, he would uh, go from having a normal game to having a good game. So, um, so that's what would happen there. Um, just trying to think of what other things I need to show you, wanted to show you. Um, so just uh, having a quick glance at the um, cheat sheets to see if there's something here that's uh, neat. Um, yeah, one thing that uh, that I find with is that it's, uh, you know, Jeremy ba Bailey is the developer, and he's uh, he obviously knows a lot about hockey because of the, just of the terminology he's using. So uh, he might have situations in the defensive zone where there could be like a board scrum. Um, I'll just wonder if I can uh, find one of the cart the cards here um, if it's normal anyway uh, it could be a thing called a board scrum or an offensive battle or a defensive battle um, like I said rush transition and there's um, there's other things too oh yeah there's a few other things I wanted to show you um, yeah if, if um, on a breakout forecheck and say that the team is trying to break out and you check against the breakout rating and uh, the, the breakout fails you would draw a new card and, and refer to this bad break section. And uh, you can have different um, situations there. You can have where it's just a loose puck in the, in the, um, in the defensive zone. Um, it could be a loose puck in the neutral zone. It could be a turnover. And if, and if that happens on a bad breakout, then the other team gets a rush transition chance. Um, is something that says D control. It just means the opposition gets control in the neutral zone. Um, um, yeah, some of the neutral zone um, scenarios that can also come up on the yellow thing is um, let's see if I can find one. Uh, there's one called chip and chase. Oh, here's one. It says pass into zone. See, it says pass into zone, and what you're going to be doing is checking the offensive player's uh, pass rating. And I'll just use Nestorenko's card, which is this number here, 83. You'd draw the card, and you would you would refer to the this 100 number here to see if uh, if that works. If it if it's within it, then he's passed it into the zone to a teammate, and then you would use uh, I think it's the zone play section here to find out who the recipient of the pass is in the offensive zone. It's also skate into zone, so you would be checking against his offensive number. Um, dump and chase situations, you could have. Um, different things where it says forecheck and so you're going to be checking the forecheck rating of the offensive player um, you can also have uh, where it says goalie risky play here's another one where um, you're going to be checking against the goalies uh, uh, play puck rating which is uh, this here that's his uh, play puck rating and uh, uh, the number below the three is a control puck rating so if it's within his play puck rating then he's played it and it's just a loose puck in the corner if it's within his control puck rating, then he's passed the puck to a teammate, and then the teammate uh, goes to the, the break, has a chance to clear the zone or to do a breakout. Um, uh, what else? Let's see. Um, 
yeah, you can have, um, oh yeah, um, on, um, on shots, you can have something called a net scramble. So uh, when, you, when you're drawing after you've determined that the shot is on target and um, you, you check the, flip the cards again and check the, this number here, if it's uh, doubles, then it's uh, automatically a net scramble uh, situation. And then you would flip the card again and you would check this net scramble section of the card here. And uh, in this case, it says clear which means that uh, you would have, you would um, look at the defensive player in the, in the zone play section on the left wing and you would have to do a check against his defensive rating to see if he clears the puck uh, away from the, um, in front of the goal. It would just, it'd just be cleared the puck into the corner and be a loose puck after that. Um, so that's kind of neat. That comes up. Um, you can also have a, a, um, some rare situations where uh, when you're looking at the number to determine if the shot is on target, if it's um, uh, if it's doubles in the upper half of the one to one to one hundred, so like 55, 66, 77, or 88, then uh, the player is um, either fanned on the shot or is sh uh, the stick is broken or something like that, and it just goes to a loose puck from there. You can have situations like that. Um, one thing in the breakout forecheck area is that a uh, uh, player can choose to use a uh, Bobby Orr move, he calls it. And that that's where you would take the player's offensive rating and add his breakout rating to it. And uh, and then you would uh, check against uh, the 100 number here to see if it's within that. So say, uh, you know, Pierre Pilot wants to do this Bobby Orr move. He has, his offensive rating is 14, his breakout rating is 30 or 20. So that means his, uh, he, uh, his uh, total rating there is 34. So if you draw, draw the number and number's 34, then he makes a Bobby Orr move. And um, then you would draw a new card and he uh, would carry it to the neutral zone. If it's within, if the number was within his breakout rating, then he uh, finds a teammate for a rush transition play. So that's uh, another kind of a neat thing to do, neat thing to happen. Um, yeah, and uh, if um, and there's also things if uh, if you know if for these rush transition things if if uh, if it fails like the defensive player is able to uh, break up the play you would look at this uh, failed section here um, to see what would happen. And so puck out of play in that instance. Um, yeah, so all in all, um, I really like this game. Um, yeah, it takes a long time to learn it, but uh, it's such a detailed game. I love the game of hockey, and this has just about everything. It's not a complete stick-touch-to-stick-touch -to -stick -touch game, as uh, Jeremy puts it. Uh, but there is some ab abstraction, but uh, there's not a lot. Um, but as you can see, it flows really well. Um, he likens it to a connect-the-dots thing, you know, where you just sort of go dot-to-dot -dot and just follow the play. And, uh, and it just follows very logically. And uh, I'd highly recommend this. Um, the game itself, I think, is like fifteen dollars, and uh, for the game parts. And then I think each season is uh, fourteen or fifteen dollars. And he's got about, I think, about a dozen seasons available at the moment. Um, <clears throat> one thing I like is that uh, once the, uh, the 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 most current regular season ends, he's got the cards available for that season available within days of the regular season ending. So. Uh, which is uh, pretty awesome. So you could play along with the playoffs if you wanted to. So anyway, um, hope you enjoy this. Um, and uh, if you have any comments, uh, please leave them below. And uh, if I, if anybody uh, spots a mistake or something like that, um, then uh, please leave your comments too. And uh, thanks for watching.